Hello and welcome back. Today I've got a good one for you. We're doing the free code camp, the intermediate algorithm scripting challenge, some all odd Fibonacci numbers. Now that's a that's a lot of words that probably don't mean very much, but I can tell you um, that it does require a pretty good understanding of array methods and uh, actually some pretty good logic too. So there's a lot we can learn from this. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to keep going here. So let's see what we got. So here's our problem. We're going to sum all odd Fibonacci numbers. And what's a Fibonacci number? Well, essentially we start with one and then we add the last two numbers in the sequence. So uh, the Fibonacci sequence always starts with one and one or one and one. So one plus one is two, two plus one is three, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, and this sequence continues on and on and on and on. So we need to uh, take in an argument, figure out all the Fibonacci numbers up to that argument, okay? Not greater than that argument, we could say. And then we're going to just add up just the odd numbers. So I've started out by laying out some basic logic that we want to get done here. And then I'll walk you through some of the tools that we're going to use for the day. So first we have create a new array property identifying the last value. Okay, what do I mean? If we start with the sequence 1 and 1, so let's say we're right here, 1, 1. The, the last value there is going to be 1, and then I want to be able to find a way to identify the to last value, this number, so I can add them together. And I'll talk a little bit more about array properties and how we can define our own and just add more properties to the array object. Uh, next, I want to create an array starting the Fibonacci sequence, and a Fibonacci sequence always starts with 1, 1. Okay, so then once we have an array, we can start applying array methods to it. And then I want to continue this Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence by adding the second to last and then the last number together. So one and one is two. And then the last number at that point was going to be two. And then the second to last then is going to be one. Add those together and push that into our array. So I want to continue this Fibonacci sequence up until the point that it is greater than or equal to our number and then stop. Well, technically less than the numbers you can see here is actually what I want to say. It's probably a clearer way of putting it. And then I want to remove all even numbers from that array. And we've used filter a few times, so we're going to be using filter again for that. And then I want to add all the numbers in the array using a reduce method. Okay, so that's what we want to get done. Let's take a look at some of this stuff here. Let's start off with some easy things. Um, uh, the remainder operator here, all right, that's one of the suggested things, right, from free code camp. And remember, if we have something like uh, 12, uh, remainder 5, the remainder of that is only going to be 2, um, so on and so forth. And you can see these examples. We've used this before. And what we're going to do is we're going to be using the remainder uh, to divide by 2. And if we get a remainder, then we know that the number is odd. And I'm going to go come back to that later, but that's the remainder. Next is going to be our reduce, and we're going to use our reduce just to add all of the elements of the array together. And we're going to be using it very similar to this right here, where we have an array, reduce, function, a, b, uh, and just return a plus b. And that what that's going to give us a final number and an output that is an integer, which will be good. So again, um, if you want to take a look and recall, we do have an accumulator and the current value. And we, there's also optional parameters we could use, such as the current index in the array. And those of you that are pretty uh, pretty smart might be able to figure out, we could probably get this done with a reduce method as well. But there's something else that I want to show you a little bit later on. Uh, the next thing that we've done before is filter. And filter does exactly what it says, is it only filters back numbers to the array that pass the test. And remember, the array that it returns is a new array, so we can actually string together more array methods if we wanted. So that's always convenient, and we're going to be filtering out those even numbers so we can just add the odd ones up. But here's the big one. Okay, this is something that's new. Array.prototype. Now, I've been using this resource for a while, and you can see that as I select an array method, it says array.prototype.filter, and then we just say whatever this array is and then filter. We don't really talk much about this word prototype and what it means and what it's actually doing. So array.prototype 
okay? It's a property that represents the prototype for the array constructor and follows you to add new property. Whoa, 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 what, what? All right, let, let's slow this down a little bit. Um, essentially, we know that we have all of these array methods that we can use, um, filter, uh, for each index of join, map, pop, push, all things that we've used. But what we don't know, or what you don't know, or you, uh, you will know, is that we can add in our own methods. For example, in this example here, we're saying that if um, the JavaScript, uh, so let's say you're loading this in an older web browser, if that JavaScript version of that web browser doesn't have the prototype um, constructor first, we're going to add in array.prototype.first. And what is that? So that means that it's going to take in a function and just return this zero. Uh-oh. Well, what is this? This is going to be whatever this array.prototype is being called on. So if we had an array of numbers, this would be just the array of numbers. If we had an array of numbers that we had in a variable and we said that variable dot first, this would be that variable which is an array. Okay, it's just a way of referring to whatever this is. And bracket zero just means in the first position. Well, if you just take a look at that example and you're thinking about it, we want to identify the last position and the second to last position as well. So that seems like something pretty easy that we can do, right? I mean, that, that's something that we can do. So we can just add in an array.prototype dot, we'll call it last and second to last, that then we can call on an array and use that in what, well, I'm going to use it in a while loop actually. So let's see how we can get this done. Let's start off with this and defining a new array.prototype. So we can say array.prototype, yes, I know I type slow, dot prototype dot, we'll call this one last. So then we can say any array dot last. And what, what will that do? What will happen? What will happen is we will run an anonymous function, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're going to not do that. We're going to take brackets to make sure our syntax is correct. And all we're going to do is return, return. And remember, just like up here, we can just say this to refer to whatever it is that we're applying that method to. And instead of zero, we want to change that. So return this. Now, in the example, it said this zero for the very first thing. So what is the last thing? The last thing is going to be this dot length. Okay. Now, this dot length is actually going to give us the length of the array. So let's pretend that we have an array right here. Okay. So let's look over here. If this was an array, all right, the length of this array would be one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it would be five. However, an array is a zero base index. So if we want the last item, it's gonna be the length, and then this is one, zero, one, two, three, four, which means that we want one less than the length if we want the last entry in that array. So just length minus one. And now we have Oh, let's finish our sentences here. There we go. There we go. So now we have an array dot prototype that we're calling last, which is which is only going to take that last entry into our array. Now, similarly, if the last is minus one, if we want the number before the last one, let's say we wanted the three, well, that three is going to be one position less than that, or instead of minus one, minus two. So watch it. I can even copy, paste, and I don't want last. Let's call this second to, and we'll make it camel case, second to last. And second to last, instead of it being the length minus one, we'll set it to length minus two. And so now, no matter how large the array is, um, it's always going to be relative to the length, and we can always say the last and then the second to last. And we can use this in our logic later on, which is exactly what we want to do. So that's the main setup here. All right. 
Um, now, we have to keep in mind uh, uh, scope here. So I think this will work even if we're inside of this function. Um, I know that uh, when I tested this, I actually had all of this here outside of this function. And um, I'm not sure if this is going to work inside this function. So let's test that out. All right, that's a good test. I think it still should work because we're still inside the one function. But anyway, we're going to start off by creating an array. It's called fib for short instead of Fibonacci because that's going to be annoying to write. So I'm just going to call it fib. And I'm going to make that a variable fib. That variable fib, I'm going to set to an array. And instead of having it being an empty array, since I always am going to be using the, um, the last and second to last, um, I'm going to put two values in because it says right here a Fibonacci sequence has the first two entries is always one and one. Since these are always true, now I have a last and a second to last as well. Hey, look, everything just kind of works out well for us there. Okay, so what's next? What's next here? Um, well, let's do a while loop. Okay, uh, what we want to do is we want to create an array um, starting the Fibonacci sequence, boom, continue the sequence, adding the last two numbers in the array while the, nec while the next Fibonacci number is less than number, which is number up here, remember, is going to be the argument that we're bringing in, and we already know that that argument is going to be an integer. All right, so let's give this a shot. So what will this look like? So we can say while, um, while what? So while our second to last number plus our last number, right? So while fib dot second to last, all right? And just like since we created a new method, all right, we'd have to make sure we have these brackets here. That's just the syntax. If you want to take a look at the proper syntax for calling it, all right, we can look further down into the documentation here. See if, and you can find where you're going to be doing this. And you can just see like the rest of them, they're going to be empty, uh, empty brackets here. All right. So you can kind of read more into that if you want. I'm assuming most of you don't want to read more into it. Just know that that's the syntax for it. Um, as long as the second to last number plus the last number in the array, then dot last, as long as those two numbers themselves are less than or equal to the argument num, right? So let's say that a, our number was 2 that we were given, all right? So, or 5 or 36, whatever it is, we're going to just keep adding these numbers in, and I'm just going to push them to the end of the array. So while this happens, I just want to add it to the end of our array. So what do I want to add to the end of the array? Whatever this number ends up being, right? So watch this. I can take this. I'm going to copy this for a second. So what I want to do is I want to push. Fib dot push. I just want to push that number, whatever that mathematical number is, to the end of the array. So all I did was if these two things, you add them together, if they're less than or equal to our num, push it to the end of the array. Now, I could set another variable in here that was, you know, fib second to last plus fib last and set it inside the scope of this while loop, but um, I think that's just an extra step that we don't really need. So right now, at this point, I have a long Fibonacci sequence up to and possibly including the argument. Okay. Um, so let's just take a look at what this looks like. So let me re return, uh, let's return fib. And we're given a number here, and that number is four. And let's see what we get. Oh, look, we get one, one, two, three. And then if you take a look at our while loop, last plus second, the last is five. Five is not less than or equal to num, so it stops there. Our Fibonacci num sequence stops right there. So right now we have this. Let's put in a bigger number here. Let's put in uh, 12. Oh, look. And now we get an array here, um, 5, 8. You know, 8 plus 5 is 13. So you can see we're getting a Fibonacci sequence that we want. Now, the only issue is here, we don't actually want to return um, 
that fit. We want to do something to it, right? We want to, uh, where are we at? We want to remove all the even numbers and then reduce all the numbers in that array by adding them. And if you remember, if we remove all the even numbers, okay, that's going to be a filter. And a filter creates a new array, so we can apply a new array method to that. So that means we can add this stuff together. So what I'm going to do, it's going to look like something like this. It's going to be fim dot uh, filter. And we're going to filter something, okay? Then after we filter, we can just reduce. And then we will reduce. All right. Now, obviously, we need to put things in between here to make this work, but that's going to be our logic. I'm going to filter out all the even numbers, then I'm going to reduce it. And by reduce, what am I talking about? I'm just talking about this right here where we just add everything up. So how do I want to filter this? Okay, that's sort of the question here. So I want to filter. So filter takes in an anonymous function. Okay, and what that's going to do is every single thing in this array, so every single number in this array, so you can call it num, but our argument here is already called num, so you can call it whatever you want. All right, it, we can call it, I don't know, whatever whatever spot we are if you want uh, inside of the... Uh, inside of the array at this moment. It doesn't really matter what that name is. Okay, and then we have to use this function. And I'll give us some space. I'll scroll down so we can see. All right, so here we go. I'll give us more space. All right, so what do we want to do? All I want to do is filter is only going to return things that pass the test. So what I want the test to be. My test, I want to be, my whatever, whatever spot I am in the array, all right, I want to take the remainder of that and two. So if the remainder of that and two is exactly zero, that means I have an even number, right? Because an even number is divisible by two. Well, you know what? I want it to not be exactly equal to zero. So it's not exactly equal to zero, all right, it, that means by default, if it's not even, it is then odd. So here we go. That makes sense. So all I did was this. Um, so you know what? Before we even add this reduce, let's see what's happening here to our sequence. So let's look over here. All right, and so hopefully we get rid of even. So the evens here should be 2 and 8 if we run this test. Oh, look, the 2 and 8 disappeared. We are doing well. We are doing well. All right, so that means we're spot on here. So next, I want to reduce and then reduce. All right, so how are we going to reduce this? Reduce, again, is going to take in a function, an anonymous function. All right, and then a comma B. And if you don't remember where I'm getting this from, all right, this is coming directly from here. So reduce function AB. We have an accumulator, and we have our current position in the array, and then we just return A plus B. So I'm just going to add that in, and it should add everything up. So here, and then there we go. Let me make sure we can all see. And then turn A plus B. I don't have any syntax errors. This should then get all added together. Ah, power level. It's over 9,000. That's right. Awesome. Awesome. So here we go. Just a quick review for you. We've gone through, we've defined our own uh, prototypes for an array or things that we can call on an array, or we use them kind of like functions, right? We are just anonymous functions that uh, we called on as properties to this array object and we called them last and second to last so we can define our own if we want or if we need to we've also used logic of a while loop applied those new uh, prototypes all right in order to push all right values to the end of an array which we've done a bunch of times before and then uh, we've used filter and reduce the same way we've used it multiple times except this time focusing on how do we get an even or an odd number? So hopefully this was helpful, and I will see you guys next time.